Welcome to Listen to Me, a multi-voiced exploration of the city with 21 guests sharing their personal experiences of Milan's contemporary art, architecture, design, music, fashion and literature. We explore each theme in four episodes. Let's begin our third episode on literature. A 1906 guide to Milan lists only five museums open to the public. Today there are over 60. Brera, the Sforza Castle, the Last Supper, as well as the two museums that we will be exploring in this episode, the Ambrosiana and the Pol di Pezzoli Museum. The fact that the Pol di Pezzoli Museum was one of the first museums ever open has awarded it a very special place in the hearts of the Milanese people. In some ways, it became the Museum of Milan, also due to the character of its founder, Gian Giacomo Pol di Pezzoli, a refined collector and passionate patriot who supported the fight for liberation from Austria, the reason why he was exiled for such a long time. This is how the writer Edgarda Ferri describes him. Even now, when I look at his portrait, I can tell that he was by no means a man of arms. Today, when I think about this extremely sophisticated intellectual who fought for freedom, obviously not on the battlefield, but he did fund and support the five days of Milan insurrection, which for us was the battle for liberty. And this is really important, because it was and still is the key moment in Italy's fight for freedom. This passion for the cause forced him to go into exile, and this is really significant. They even confiscated his home, so he had to endure some serious difficulties on a personal level, which makes me admire him a lot. But Pol di Pezzoli not only bestowed political dedication on the city, he also donated his much-loved palace full of wonderful objects which he hunted down from some of the most famous antique dealers of the times. And even when you enter today, you remain astounded by the preciousness of the objects, the vastness and tastefulness of the collections. Even if you're a child, as son of the great crossword writer Stefano Bartezzaghi reminds us. I went to Pol di Pizzoli on a school trip when I was at junior school. It was the first time I had ever set foot in a museum. I don't know if I already had an idea of what a museum was or how different this one was. However, I knew that I was entering a place that was arranged like a house, but that it was filled with all these beautiful things. Obviously, a child, a young boy, isn't able to distinguish this so much, but we did study a bit before we went. The place left an imprint on me of what a house museum could be, of something so special. Basically, an art collection in a home, or in any case, a museum space displayed like a home, rather than a place that has maybe been purpose-built, has a more residential dimension, is a living space. That's a very different thing, no? Then in my case, there is also the fact that the most important work was used as the basis for one of my father's puzzles, one he was really fond of. And so this was also an element of familiarity. While Bartizzaghi discovered the museum as a child, the writer Alberto Rollo first went there in his teens as a secondary school pupil and has remained intrigued by it for the rest of his life. For me, the Pol di Pezzoli is a museum, a small museum, a jewel that has always stirred something inside me. When I was at high school, a maybe not so likable but extremely intelligent female professor of Latin and Greek said to me, you should visit the Pol di Pezzoli Museum because there's a profile of a woman who represents an entire civilization." The entire civilization is in that woman's profile. I have to say I have never forgotten those words. Later on, during my lunch breaks, when I worked at the Feltrinelli Publishing Company in Via Andigari, I would often go and stare at that woman's profile, her necklace, the just noticeable contours of her bosom, the damask of her dress. I had a very intense relationship with that painting. 
but also with the place itself. The woman's profile that Alberto Rollo is talking about is the famous Dama del Pollaiolo, known in English as the portrait of a young girl. The painting of an elegant noblewoman with an elaborate hairstyle adorned with pearls, an icon that has become the logo and symbol of the museum itself. Alberto Rollo continues, As my teacher said, that woman's profile conveyed the sense of a great civilization. There is a great intimacy in knowing how to look, knowing how to read a face. There's a mini novel inside that face. This is merely what I felt. It's not something that's necessarily written. It's not like rereading a book. For me, it was more like being mesmerized by beauty. This is the feeling it gave me. The fact that Pol di Pezzoli is both a museum and a house is reconfirmed brilliantly by the writer Alberto Saibene. There's an anecdote about Guido Gregorietti, the post-war director nominated in 45. In the early days, his children, Anna Maria, who later married into the Gandini family and founded the Milano Libri Publishing House, and Salvatore Gregorietti, who went on to become a graphic designer for Linus magazine and created the cover of the Name of the Rose novel, initially slept in the museum due to the housing crisis in Milan. So it actually was a real home for a while. It became a house during the post-war, then a house museum. Certainly, it is a very Milanese place. In fact, it is an extraordinary collection that you need to sort of discover a little by yourself, you could say. We asked the great Milanese graphic designer Salvatore Gregorietti, who has worked with legends like Bob Norda and Massimo Vignelli, the creator of New York's Apple logo, if he really slept in the halls of Pol di Pezzoli. Yes, the Pol di Pezzoli was my first home in Milan. My father came to Milan because he had been nominated as director to renovate the Pol di Pezzoli, which had been severely damaged during the war. During his early days in Milan, I followed my father to Pol di Pezzoli, where I would run up and down the stairs, put the helmets on my head and play with the halberds. It was basically my playground, and I'm very fond of it. It's still a place where I always like to go, because it, it is full of many happy memories. The Pol di Pezzoli Museum can be found in Via Manzoni 12, close to the stop Monte Napoleone, on the yellow metro line M3. Let's leave Pol di Pezzoli behind us, this place that has inspired so many writers, and head off to discover one of the most spectacular and ancient art galleries and libraries in the city. It's the Ambrosiana, a library and picture gallery founded way back in the early 17th century by Cardinal Federico Borromeo. There are paintings by Leonardo da Vinci, Botticelli, Caravaggio, and Raphael's magnificent drawing of the School of Athens. And for book lovers, the most awe-inspiring moment is the sight that awaits you at the end of the visit when you enter the evocative library where the walls of ancient books loom up in the dim light like a monument to the knowledge of the past. The Ambrosiana can be found in Piazza Pio XI at just a short walk from the stop Duomo on the red metro line M1. This is the end of the episode, but don't take your headphones off just yet. Our last episode on literature is going to take you to one of the most famous districts in Milan, the Navigli Canals. To listen to the next episodes, follow us on your favourite podcast platforms or visit www.casemuseo.it where you can also buy the Casa Museo card to visit the Pol di Pezzoli Museum, the Bagatti Valsecchi Museum and Villa Necchi Campiglio at a discount price. The Boschi di Stefano House Museum is free to visit. <laughs>